All right. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 152. Uh, we're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. I'm happy to join you today. And usually we have somebody helping us out with the, uh, the stuff, um, but we don't today, Marwa. So it's just me. I clicked go live. I think we're live. Rich says hello. So I think that means we are. Um, there's like a way to do stuff like show, like, let me see if I, oh, like, wow. So yes. I just figured out how to do that. Um, so we're running the show tomorrow today, Marwa. Um, and oh, oh what yeah. a show it is. <laughs> um, we uh, we just, uh, just finished this. Let me turn on my timer right now. Um, all right, I've got that on the screen, on my screen, which I'm going to share in a minute. So, um, what do we have, Mara? What, what's today's topic? It's about Apex Diva. Right. Yeah, and, and you know, my uh, my blog's name is apexdebug.com. That's my blog. And you would think that I know everything there is to know about Apex Debug, but there's there's actually always more about it. I, uh, um, I'm i always finding out new things. Um, we did a, a show one time, I think, about Apex underscore debug, the PL SQL package. Um, and that it's uh, actually, I did a blog post about it and it's really complicated. You think it's just doing a quick little write to the, the table, but um, it's much more complicated than that. Uh, today, though, our tip is going to be on Apex dot debug, not Apex underscore debug. What's the difference, Marwa, between Apex underscore debug and Apex dot debug? It's used from JavaScript, Apex dot debug. That's right, exactly. So let me share my screen. And I'll point that out. Um, so apex.debug is the JavaScript routine. So apex.debug has these different things, message and so forth. And I like to use apex debug instead of console.log. Um, and Mara, what's the difference between console.log, apexdebug.log, apexdebug.message? What are the differences there? you can keep your messages that you logged in and don't have to worry about them you can query them afterwards yeah exactly if we use apex if we use console.log console.log is always going to spit something to the log every single time and so if i'm writing javascript i don't want the, the stuff to get logged to the console log all the time if i'm using javascript and i use console.log i feel like i have to go back in and comment it out but if I use apex debug.log or apex debug.message, if I use you have the first argument, which is debug level. Right. I don't need to, I don't need to comment them out because they'll only show, well, apex debug message levels one and two are always going to spit out. Those are always going to hit the log, even if you're not, if you're not running any debug, though, because those are errors and warnings. But the messages three, four, five, six, seven, those will only show if you've actually enabled debug. So typically in your builder environment, you would be able to enable debug. In your production environment, you, you probably wouldn't. So you wouldn't be turning these things on, but you can leave them in your code. They don't spit out to the message log. So if we look at this right here um, and I run this page, uh, oh, I haven't even clicked off the timer. I'm gonna turn on the timer right now. There we go. We, maybe we cheated a little bit. Um, I'm gonna show my console. Um, right here. And when I click this run JavaScript, I'm seeing levels one and two. And that's because, because debug is off. But I only see one and two. If I turn debug on to, to here, I'm going to see the level three and four because that, that's level four. Info is level four. The problem that I have with this, though, is in order to see these other debug messages, I have to, I have to run the page in debug mode, right? If I, if I'm running the page in debug mode, that means I'm getting all of this stuff in my debug log. Sometimes it takes a lot longer when you run in debug mode, you, you get all kinds of stuff in here and you have to reload the page when you turn, when you, when you do this, you have to reload the page. So I want debug mode off on the page and I'm actually going to remove it from here to just show this that I don't need I don't want to have it in the URL I just want I want I want to see my messages 
but I don't want to have to reload the page. Marla, yes. any advice for me? Yes, I'm seeing the little select list, the client side debug, and I think you can do something with that. So you have a list of different debug levels, and you're going to use the apex.debug routine from JavaScript to set the debug level. That's, that's exa exactly what I'm doing. So what I've done is I've created this little select list that allows me to change my client side debug. And I can change it. So right now, if I run the JavaScript, I only see level one and two. But if I go here and I turn it to app trace, now what it did was it set the debug level to six. So I'm gonna run, click this run JavaScript. Now I see all six of mine right here. Right. Um, if I send it, set it back to zero. If I set it to zero and I run my JavaScript, I'm not gonna see any because I've, I've explicitly turned it off. But what it would normally be would be set to say two and then I'll see one and two. So that's what we're seeing. That's what we, we get when we do this. So this gives me the ability to do client side only debug. Um, I, wish, I wish this debug right here would give me a client side or a database side or both, but it doesn't. So I had to write my own client side debug. So yes. let's And take a that's done on page zero. Exactly, so that I have this on every page. So what I did was on page zero, um, uh, hmm, I'm not sure what changes I made. I'll go ahead and save them. This is just a little demo app. So we'll go to page zero and this is the item. So I, I created a, a select list item and that select list item just has zero through nine, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I labeled these that match the labels on uh, the namespace. Um, and then I put an on change little bit of JavaScript. And this is all the JavaScript code I needed. I put these in here to tell me what the level was before and what I was planning to set it to and what I actually set it to. The other key element is you have to pass a number here. If you do this dot triggering that value, it's not going to be a number. So I'm, I set it here. I suppose I could have squeezed all of this in here but I did this just to make it really explicit. And then I set my level and that's it. So all I have is just really, this could be just one line of JavaScript code in here. I don't need all of this code. This could just be this one line. I'll put it right here. It could just be this with this inside it. And this would be my one line of JavaScript code right here that I would put into this, this little element and I've got it. So I'm gonna cancel that. The other thing is I only want this to show if I'm logged into the builder. And so I've got this right here. I've only got this right here. If I'm logged into the builder and that's this right here, I've got a little PL SQL expression and that's if the app builder session is not null. So only if I have an app builder session, will this show on my page? So that's it right here. That's why it's showing here. If I run the same exact page in an in kind Cognito window right here. I'm going to just put uh, a IT. We've got 11 seconds to show that that no longer shows because it's not there. So I'm going to turn off our clock here. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to show this little bit of JavaScript so people see it. This is what's really key these two lines right here so people can see it. You don't need any of this. I'll delete it out of there just so you don't. So I'll make this really big. So anybody that's watching this, this is all the code you need. That's great answer. And I think the app builder session that you used in the server side condition could be a bonus tip for people to hide or show items on their page based on if the user is connected to the builder or not. Ah, uh, yes. Always good to squeeze in a bonus tip. Um, exactly. So, well. And other question, does that persist in the page? I mean, when you refresh after changing the debug that's level. That's a great question. So this does not, if I do this the way I've done it here, and I, so I've set it to, um, let's say, engine trace. And if I look at my, if I look at my output here, and I run my JavaScript, I'm getting all seven here. If I refresh this page and then I run my JavaScript, 
I'm not. It does not persist from page to page. Um, so it's only set for the page the moment you're on, on it. Um, I suppose if you wanted to, that's a good question. What you could do, actually, that's really interesting. You could, um, when you do this, you could set it in a cookie, and then on page load, you could read read the cookie, and then reset it so that it happens from page to page to page. And that would be interesting. That would be interesting to do. Um, maybe yes. that's your next uh, our next task. Um, but that would be more than one line of JavaScript. This we can do with one line of JavaScript. It's apex debug dot set level. Um, it's right here. It's the set level command. So apex debug dot set level. Make sure you pass in a number, not a string to this, uh, or it won't work. Um, all right. I guess that's my, I guess that's our tip for today. Marwa, we're on our own today. I don't even know how to put up the banner for a wisdom of the week or a joke or anything. So I guess we can't, we can't do any of those things today. Oh, okay. It's okay. <laughs> and I don't know how to put up the thing to say, you know, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. Um, about all I know how to do is remove my screen and add my screen. Um, so there we go. Uh, but we can tell all the people to do all the things. What are they supposed to do, Marwa? They should like, subscribe, and send a letter to their mom. That's exactly right. Thanks. All right, everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.